Let me start by saying, first and foremost, that I understand that it's not easy to be a new Muslim. The sacrifices that you're making, the problems that you're having, they don't know what's happening in your life. They see new Muslims becoming Muslim, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah, Takbir, Allahu Akbar. And then what? What happens when you return home? We know how you feel. We know that you're going to go today, back home tonight, and you're going to face. Someone's going to call you. Your mom is going to say this. Your father is going to say that. Your roommate is going to tell you what you're wasting your time. You're wasting your life. And of course, let's not forget the shaitan is going to be there saying, I think they're right. Why are you wasting your life? Why are you covering your hair? Why are you growing your beard? Why are you wearing these funny clothes? You're wasting your life. You're young now. Have fun. Isn't that what happens? Then we have our families to fight sometimes. Then we have culture, the cultures that we're coming from. Our societies don't accept us. They say, what are you doing? Look at you. And you're like, what? I didn't accept, I didn't accept this kind of Islam. Media. We new Muslims have experienced another lifestyle. So we can easily return back to that. There's the danger of that. So when you hear the media keep telling you that Muslims are like this, Muslims are like that, that little voice in your mind is telling you, man, what if they're right? We're suffering. Look, this is what you embrace, this is what you come to. Understand this. Allah is telling you, you think you'll just say, I believe and that's it? No, Allah says, we've tested those before them and will test you to show which one is truthful, which one said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah from your heart, from your heart. Don't tell me that you don't love your mom and dad now that you embrace Islam. You love them and Allah commands you to love them and Allah commands you to serve them. Isn't it? So it's not easy. It's not easy. And that's why, sadly, let's be honest, here, people are fighting to keep you into Islam, to help you into Islam. They come to work to help you into Islam. Because a lot of new Muslims fall out of Islam. They do. How many Muslims have taken Shahada? We hear about it every month. But the reality is that a lot of them, that's where it stops. And I remember this statement in a time where I was at a very difficult point in my life. I was in high school. It was a time when I left Christianity. It was a time when my heart was breaking. I didn't know what I want to do. I didn't know everything that I knew was not true. I felt betrayed. And I remember going for an English exam. And I prepared so much studying all kinds of, you know, literature and so on. And then the teacher went and wrote on the board this statement some of the greatest battles that were ever fought were within the quiet chambers of one's heart your heart my heart they said write an essay of what does this mean to you and I remember start I started writing and I couldn't stop because I had so much inside that I wanted to talk about and it's difficult but you're trying. But let us put it on in perspective now. You're a new Muslim. Now, some of the things I'll say now, maybe you'll get a bit shocked. But they're truth and I'll prove it. The Sahaba of the Prophet ﷺ were new Muslims. The Prophet ﷺ received revelation. Now make a connection. The Prophet himself that we follow every single day in our lives, the Sahaba, the companions, the Sahabiyat, the women companions, most of them were new Muslims. True or not? Imagine how he feels. I want you to imagine how he feels. 
The same way you felt when you took shahada, of course more, but think at least a glimpse of it you feel. When you took shahada, how did you feel when everyone screamed, Allahu Akbar, when people start lining up to, to, to hug you, to congratulate you? You felt like to change. You felt like God gifted you the best thing in your life, didn't you? You were happy. The Prophet said, imagine how he felt, even though he was scared. But Allah picked him. What happened after? There was no revelation for about six months. No revelation. Look at that test. Why the Prophet ﷺ faced the test? The most beloved of Allah. He could have had the best life. The easiest life, right? He's Rasulullah. So you see, when you make a connection, when John and Ahmed and Fatima and Tracy and Stacy or whatever, you look at your life and you say, the Prophet ﷺ suffered. I'm sure sometimes you fall on your knees, you make sujood and you're crying and you say, why me? Why do I have to suffer? Allah tells us in the Quran, in Surah Al-Ankabut, do people think that they will be left alone on saying we believe and they will not be tested? Understand this. Allah is telling you, you think you'll just say I believe and that's it? No, Allah says we've tested those before them and will test you to show which one is truthful. Which one said La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah from your heart. From your heart. Allah is preparing you for something, something great in your life to make a difference in this world. And Allah has picked you. Isn't that amazing? I came upon something amazing the other day. Does anyone know the Chinese bamboo tree? The Chinese bamboo tree is a tree that needs to be watered from three to five years on a daily basis, according to National Geographic. Three to five years on a daily basis. If you skip one day, it's over. Day in, day in, day you, it's working, hard work, hard work, hard work. And after five years, when the roots catch, it takes six weeks and it grows to 20 feet in six weeks. Within 24 hours, it can grow up to three feet. Do you understand that? So did it take the Chinese bamboo tree six weeks to grow to 20 feet or did it take it five years? It took it five years. It took it five years, even though the roots didn't go inside yet. But that process of constant work, that's the one that paid off. Allah is putting you through constant tests every day because once the roots will be firm, that's when you grow. Don't think, well, like the first two years, three years of my Islam were the most difficult. And I didn't want to tell the doubts, the feelings, the weakness, the problems that I had in my heart. Come on, let's, we're not going to become angels this the day we take shahada. Yes, our sins will be forgiven. But then you go back to reality. You go back to what happened last week, it's still a reality. What happened last month, what you did in 2001, it's a truth. And some of you can't forget it, subhanAllah. Isn't it? So we cannot forgive ourselves sometimes for the things that we have done. But Allah is testing us. Allah is putting us through this. And if we will allow ourselves to think for a moment that we are alone, that we are weak, that we're the only ones, then we will fall. But if we understand the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, if we understand the test that we are going through, if you understand and remember the sweetness of the day when you take shahada, then you have to stay positive. Day in and day out. It's not easy. It's difficult. You can either come bitter out of it or come better out of it. By the morning brightness, 
This is what was revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu after no revelation came for six months. Why by this morning brightness? If you're depressed, you stay in the darkness. Allah is swearing by the morning brightness. And by the night as it covers with darkness. The night is for rest, brothers and sisters. People who are depressed, who are negative, they stay up at night. They can't sleep. Pay attention. Your Lord did not abandon you. Now, after six months, Allah is revealing. That, yes, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi I love you. I did not forget about you. Why this test? Because the hereafter, in the end, is better for you than this dunya. This test is in this dunya. What are you being prepared for? What are you being purified for? For Jannah. And your Lord is going to give you and you'll be satisfied. You didn't have in this life, someone cheated you, someone mistreated you, someone took your rights. Well, guess what? They're not going to get away with it. Allah is telling you that He will give you and you'll be pleased. And then He says, Did He not find you as an orphan and give you refuge? All of us, our family sometimes left us. Sometimes we're in our life that no one was there except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's no one here in this room or in this gathering where you can say that I could rely upon someone all the time except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In your sickness, in your lost your job, whatever it was, Allah was with you. And He found you lost and guided you. Isn't that the truth for all of us here? So what's, what should you do now? How should you help yourself? <clears throat> As for the orphan, do not oppress him. Look at that. Talking about you being an orphan before, so don't do the same thing that maybe someone has done to you. Help the orphans. Help people. Social work. And for the one who asks, don't repel him. Someone asks for your help. Help him. Why? When you're depressed, if you're negative, if you're not positive, you just care about yourself. You just don't see the whole world. It's like you're the only one who has a problem. Wallahi, just look at the one next to you who's suffering more than you. Open your eyes and see the world. And you'll find you'll feel much better, subhanAllah. Because you're like, subhanAllah, I don't even have it that difficult. Look at other people. And that's why it's amazing when you hear these stories, subhanAllah. Because you thought you had it, but then subhanAllah. Then he says, and as for the favor of the Lord, report it, tell it. Be happy with what you have. Wallahi, when you feel negative, brother and sister, just think for one second about the blessings of you being able to breathe. Take a breath. There's many people who can't do that. And that is a blessing for you. I want to leave you with some practical tips. Number one, brothers and sisters, if anyone asks you what's Islam about, tell them hope and love. Number two, brothers and sisters, never give up. Wallahi, don't ever give up. It's never, you never lost the war. You've never lost it. You get hit, you get knocked down, get up. Find your comfort zone in your faith. It's in the basics of Islam. It's in the Tawheed. Let your comfort be there. That Allah is one. No one can take that away from you. No one. Don't allow people to put you down. And don't put yourself down. Be careful of your friends. Brothers and sisters, be careful of your friends. New Muslims, we come with baggage. We have ex-boyfriends and girlfriends. We have ex-addictions. We have problems. We have addictions. Indeed we do. Be careful of who is around you because these people remind you of those old days. Do you remember when we used to do this, this? And you're like, oh yeah, man, that was nice. Be careful of this. Aim high. Aim for success. Do the best you can do in your life, in your job, in your education. Be healthy. Volunteer. Help someone else. Study, invite others to Islam. And last but not least, love. 
It's very important that you share your Islam with someone that you love, family, people that care about you. I want to end by the great hadith narrated by Ibn Qayyim. In one of his great books, it's a hadith Qudsi. And it is, I think, one of the most beautiful hadith ever. So I want you to pay attention because this summarizes, I would say pretty much what Islam is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Myself, mankind and jinn are in great serious state. I create them and they worship other gods that they make for themselves. I bless them with my bounties then they thank someone else for what I send to them. My mercy descends to them while their evil deeds ascend to me. I endear them with my gifts even though I have no need of any of them while they alienate themselves from me with their sins even though they are desperate for my help. Whoever returns to me, I accept him, no matter how far he is. And whoever turns away from me, I approach him and call on him. And whoever leaves a sin for my sake, I reward him with many gifts. And whoever seeks to please me, I seek to please him. Whoever acknowledges my will and my power, in whatever he does, I make the iron bend for his sake. My dear people are those who are with me, wherever they are, whatever they say, supplicate and remember. Whoever thanks me, I grant him more blessings. Whoever obeys me, I raise him and endear him more. Whoever disobeys me, I keep the doors of mercy open for him. If he returns to me, I bestow him with my love since I love those who repent and purify themselves for my sake. If he does not repent, I still treat him by putting them in hardship to purify them. Whoever favors me over others, I favor them over others. I reward every single good deed 10 times or even 700 times over to countless times over. I count every single bad deed as one unless the person repents and asks for my forgiveness, in which case I forgive even that one. I take into account any little good deed, and I forgive even major sins. My mercy supersedes my anger, my tolerance supersedes my blame, my forgiveness supersedes my punishment, and I am more merciful with my slaves than a mother with her child. Zakun akhir, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa